friends, I'm Taylor Hughes, and you are listening to another episode of the Chasing Wonder podcast. This is the show where we just look for a little extra in our ordinary. It's interesting. I This week had something happen that I'm sure many of you have had happen, where my phone reminded me of memories by showing me photos. You know how the, the photo memories pop up where it says, a year ago you were doing this, five years ago you were doing this. And it caused me to think, what other memories do I have that I don't have any digital record of? You know, think. in fact, think right now, wherever you're at, take a moment if you can, if it's safe to close your eyes, do so. And just try to think of a moment in time that there's no digital record of, but was amazing. Think of a time in your life when you can't pull up a video on your phone or look on your computer through old photos. And think of a moment where you were just fully present I'm so grateful uh, for photographs. I'm so grateful for videos. I'm so grateful for these documentations of moments we've had. But some of my favorite memories were not viewed through a camera lens. They were just moments that happen and they only exist in our memories. So as I was walking around the neighborhood this morning and thinking of all these great things, I thought, let's make that what we talk about on the podcast this week. With that in mind, I want to talk to you about life before memory cards. It was just a few weeks before my sixth birthday, and my parents had given me a choice. I was either going to get to have our old Atari video game fixed, or I could get a brand new 8-bit Nintendo Entertainment System. Before they could finish laying out their offer, I shouted out, NINTENDO! Any kid growing up at this point in the 80s would have done the exact same thing. Because we had been watching the commercials nonstop, and there was even a rumor that Lisa from our first grade class had one at her house. Nintendo had been around for a little while, but this version was special. It had a combo pack that included the Duck Hunt gun, as well as Rob, an actual robot that you could play the game with. I mean, it turned out just to be a robot that could spin tops on a controller. It was super weird, but I was stoked about it. And even though I knew this was going to be my big present, I was so filled with joy waiting for the big day. The night of my birthday, we gathered with friends and family at a favorite restaurant called Sir Pizza and Stuff. It's not around anymore, but this was our local mom and pop version of a Shakey's Pizza. And I got to say this, it put the chain restaurant to shame. We played games in the small arcade that they had attached to the pizza place, and then we we settled in for a feast of pizza, chicken, fried potato wedges that for some reason we all referred to as spuds. All that was left to do now was to open presents. The family watched as I opened each and every gift, and the entire time I was distracted because my eyes kept looking over to the big box in the corner that I knew was going to be the ultimate gift. Friends, my parents did not let me down. Not only did I receive the NES Mega Package, but I also received what would become the most coveted game in all of kiddom, The Legend of Zelda. Unlike its peers whose plastic covers were the kind of gray you only see in airport lobbies, Zelda's cartridge was made of solid gold. Okay, it was painted gold, but it, it was shiny and I loved it. This video game would become my obsession for the next several months. One thing you have to keep in mind about this time period was that it was long before memory cards allowed you to save your game. You know, today most video games will have some sort of feature where you can save your progress and they'll just allow you to pick up and continue playing where you left off last session. But back in my day, (laughs) I've always wanted to say that, back in my day, there was only one way to save your progress and that was to not die. You couldn't even shut off the game or you would be back to square one. And so what we would do is we would just hit pause on the console and then we would, you know, leave it on pause for essential breaks like snack time or going to school. After several months of attempting to save Zelda and win the game, I decided that I I was just going to devote an entire weekend to the conquest. This required me to get approval from the entire family, seeing as we only had one TV and I would be needing exclusive use. Well, somehow they all said yes, and so it was on. I started Friday after school, and apart from taking a small break for dinner, I played late into the evening. I then paused the game, turned off just the TV, and resumed the next morning. I repeated this process Saturday night, and by Sunday morning, I was nearly to the end of my quest. Now, at this point, my mom insisted 
that I get a bath. Because my cousins were coming over for lunch and my dedication to this adventure had quite a negative impact on my personal hygiene. About 15 minutes later, I was dressed, refreshed, and ready to brag to my cousins about all I had accomplished. Then disaster struck. I came into the living room to find that my cousins had arrived and started playing the game while I was gone. Because one of my cousins didn't know what she was doing, she hit the reset button. All of my progress was erased. I was devastated. All of that work I did was for nothing. I was back to the beginning. I felt so discouraged. My cousin felt bad. Not bad enough, but she did apologize. And to this day, I have never saved Zelda because I was so bummed about my work being lost that I stopped trying. I recently was journaling about this story at an interesting moment because in a way, it felt like the year 2020 pushed the reset button on my career. I know that most entertainers feel that way. One person asked me what it was like to be an entertainer in 2020, and I said it would be like if you were a dentist and you woke up one day and teeth didn't exist anymore. All that we had worked for, the shows we booked, they had all gone away in the midst of this global pandemic. And let's be honest, I I don't really have an idea when people will gather in a theater again or feel comfortable choosing a playing card. But re-examining this story from my youth is helping me find hope for today. The truth is, when you end up having the reset button pushed in any area of your life, you aren't starting over from the beginning. You're a different person today than you were when you started. In fact, you've got skills and abilities that you developed by getting there the first time, which means you're in a better position to build again. You should be encouraged knowing that you're going to be able to build quicker the next time and make it better than it was before. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't all mourn the moment that we're in when it's rough. It's okay to be mad, but I would challenge you to shift your frustration into action. You know, I wonder about Zelda and what would have happened if I had taken a different route instead of quitting. In the moment, I let my frustration about what had happened to me keep me from moving forward and accomplishing a goal that I had set out to do. And, you know, part of why I'm writing a book about all this stuff is because I don't want to get stuck in this moment of frustration. Sure, right now a lot of us are experiencing the effects of the reset button being hit. But the question we need to ask is this, where do we want to go from here? We can be angry about the things that have happened to us, or we can choose to view things through the eyes of wonder and instead ask, what will we make happen next? I asked you to think earlier about a moment in life where there's no digital record. You were just in the moment, you were present, you experienced this incredible experience. So I want to try something different. There's this app called Clubhouse. Many of you have heard of it. Many of you are on it. Many of you are on it and have no idea what it is or what you're doing with it. It's basically a place where you can connect and have conversations with lots of people. I thought it'd be fun to schedule a time for us to talk about this life before memory cards. I want to hear uh, your story and you can hear some fun stories from some other people and we can just connect and kind of keep this conversation going. So on Monday, March 1st at 5 Pacific time, I'm going to have a clubhouse room open. It's going to be called Life Before Memory Cards and I'd invite you to join me. If uh, you're available to make it and you're not on clubhouse, you need to invite, uh, shoot me a message through social media at Magic Storyteller and uh, I've got a few invites. But let's keep the conversation going and friends, until I see you again, go out there and just keep chasing wonder. 